Good evening, folks. Back again, Liam Sweeney here at uh, West Harvard Democratic Headquarters with the mayor of West Hartford once again. Uh, it is such a it's been an honor and privilege to serve with you. Uh, so what, one of the things we've been asking folks is like, what does it mean to be reelected as mayor again, be the top vote getter of your of your hometown, and what does that mean to you? It means so much, and I think it's a reflection of the work that our team has done over the last two years. We have a very engaged constituency that is really thoughtful about the way they vote. Um, I do think they vote for people, uh, and they have trust in us, and they have brought us back. But it's so special because I now have four generations living in town. My mom, who's 95, and my new granddaughter, who's 14 months, just moved here. So it's all those considerations of meeting the needs and having a town that is attract, you know, attractive and fulfilling for all of those ages. Absolutely. And Mayor Cantor, for folks that don't know this, is a star on the state, state format we have so many people. The governor comes here to see what what she's leading this town to. We have so much going on in town. We are in the bustling Corbin's Corner right now. This was not the way it used to be even six years ago, five years ago. Um, and I think the reason is that because you've had such a focus on on what you wanted to do. And I guess the question I have is like, what do you, what's next? I mean, we've done so you've done so much in town. Like, what is next? How do you how do you keep how do you keep it going? Well, I, I think you keep it going by being as, as having as good governance as you can, being as fiscally responsible as you can, but also being a real energizer for the for this area and saying we want investments, we want redevelopment, we want reinvestment in our community. We don't have a lot of land, so it really is talking about updating areas like this Corbin's Corner that millions of dollars went into to reinvest in a place where Bye Bye Baby went out, but they came back here. So that's that's what we want. We want to have this vibrancy where people really want to be, and, and we're seeing that investment. And you can't always say, you know, we don't want all this investment now. We want to pace it out. Well, sometimes life doesn't happen that way. You kind of have to talk about investors that are able and willing to invest at a certain time. So and so we're seeing some of that. So true. And, and my last question is, so, you, you, you're just being reelected to another two-year term. You're going to be the mayor for another two years. What are you most looking forward to over this next term? So, well, I think local government has an incredible responsibility to be an example of how we treat each other, how we listen to people that might not agree with us, uh, how we are invested and engaging in our own community. Uh, and to me, it's an example of all that we do. And I, I look forward to working with a new team. You know how each team is different. Yep. Um, and we will have opportunities and challenges known and unknown to us. And meeting those challenges with the honesty, the dignity, the respect uh, that we've done in the past and continuing to do that in the future. And having West Hartford be one of the best communities in the country to live. That's so true. And uh, that is Mayor Sherry Cantor of West Hartford, an absolute rock star here, the most famous person in West Hartford. Um, and I'm just happy to be here with her tonight and celebrate with the team. And I will let you go enjoy your family. I don't think her granddaughter is going to be here, but um, I'm just so happy for you and, and good luck. Thank you, Liam, and thank you for your service. Absolutely. It has been an honor to work with you. Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll, we'll be right back. Good evening, folks. Liam Sweeney here back at uh, Democratic headquarters uh, getting the results in. And with me tonight is newcomer to the council, but not newcomer to West Harvard politics, Deb Poland, a former chairwoman of the Board of Ed, and now councilwoman for West Hartford. And so, Deb, one of the things we're, we are asking folks tonight is like, what does it mean for you to serve on the town council in West Hartford? It's actually, it's such an honor to serve on the town council. We have a great team. Really appreciate working with you, Liam, and sorry you won't be uh, joining us moving forward, but led by Mayor Cantor and you um, with Carol Blanks, Ben Winograd, and Tiffany McGinnis. It's just been an amazing team to learn from and to really think through the issues about how to make West Hartford 
a strong, uh, desirable place to live for people of all ages and backgrounds uh, for now and into the future. So, you know, there are a lot of reasons why people run, but like, what are you most excited as a town councilor to work on? I know that you've, you've been on the council for a little bit of a time. Um, you serve on the Board of Ed, but what, what excites you the most about working, uh, serving on the town council in your next, in your, your next full term? Well, hoping that I have another full term. Uh, I'm excited because we have a lot of different projects coming online for us to consider. And West Hartford is in a, a phase where we have new things happening. And it's the new community center being built. We have new families moving to town, new apartments going up, new condos. We're cons we've extended the Troutbrook Trail. We are focusing on our parks, replacing pools. So there's a lot of new things happening, and it makes it just a great place to live because we have a great community that wants to have West Hartford um, be well-rounded as far as what it provides to live here. That's great. Well, uh, folks, that is Deb Pullen, soon to be your next town councilor here. I'm just so excited to see her get on. She's going to be such a value add as a former chairwoman of the Board of Ed, uh, long time parent of two from West through West Harvard Public Schools. Um, just excited to see her do amazing things on the town council. Excited to see how things settle up here, but uh, we'll be back with some more folks uh, later on. Thank you. All right, thank you. We'll be on David off. Um, so I'm here with Tiffany. So Tiffany, how's it feel to be done with the election? You are a, a, a seasoned pro on campaigns. But what does it feel to have your own campaign in the rear view? Uh, I'm glad it's over. Yeah. I'm exhausted. How, how, <laughs> how was the campaign for you? I mean, it was good. It was, uh, I think I did everything I could do. Yeah. So I haven't been nervous because, you know, I did. You've done this before. Well, yeah, but not for myself. But yeah, I mean, I think that. I left it all in the field, so, you know. So one of the things that we've been asking folks is, like, what does it mean for you, Tiffany McGinnis, to be a town councilor here in West Harvard? Um, I, it means that I get to, you know, make sure or help make sure that the town stays like the place that we want it to move and um, that it grows and is welcoming for all people and you know that I get to help people that's awesome I mean it's, it's such an important thing for candidates to really understand like what why they're in this for the right reason and I think the last thing I'll ask you is what we asked Barry is what are you most excited to work on on the town council uh, probably affordable housing there you go. Why? Be uh, <laughs> we need to be a place that's welcoming for all income levels, single mothers, young families, college students, and you know, right now it's hard for a lot of people to move here. So that's that's such a great that's such a true story. We've been doing a lot of work on that here on the council. I'm so excited to see Tiffany shine in this new role. Um, she's just an, an awesome add to this team, and um, I can't wait to see what she does on the council. Um, and with that, we'll, we'll be back with more folks as they uh, pour into uh, headquarters here. It's starting to fill up, and uh, yeah, we'll be back shortly. All right. Good evening, folks, back here at uh, Democratic headquarters. I'm here with Latoya Fernandez, a new, new Board of Ed member. Uh, so, one, how does it feel to be done with the campaign? Uh, weight lifted, breath of fresh air, excited, nervous, all the things. Honored. That's awesome. So, what does it mean to you to be on the Board of Ed here in West Harvard? Uh, it means the world to me. Um, number one, just being able to represent my community, you know, being able to be a parent, somebody who's from the community that grew up in the Connecticut school system, um, and, and it is truly an honor to serve. I feel like it's something that you're supposed to do. We got to step up, support our communities, and make sure that we're representing the democracy in this country at the local level, the state level, the federal level. So I'm just honored to do my part. So the Board of Ed doesn't get as much shine as the town council. I mean, I'm sorry. 
as a former council, I'm a little biased on that. But tell us a little bit about you, like where, 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 how you came here. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm born and raised in Connecticut from Hartford, uh, moved to California for a while. I've been in every uh, position in the education system. I've started as a crossing guard, became a tutor, a teacher, an administrator, worked in po public policy, and then moved back home to Connecticut to West Hartford, where we have some of the greatest schools in the nation. Um, and, and I'm just excited to serve. Yeah. So exciting. I can feel the passion, and you and I have talked a lot about this. But I, I want to know, like, what it, in, in your upcoming term, what are you most excited to work on on the Board of Ed uh, from a policy or just general, uh, generally any, any topic? Yeah, I think the thing that I'm most excited about is bringing that equity and inclusion piece, getting parents to the table who don't normally come, community members, engaging them in that conversation, listening to teachers about what their needs are, including student voice at the table, um, and just making sure that we're creating that sense of belonging and interconnectedness in our community when it comes to our students' education. That's so important. We have such a growing, diverse, uh, amazing, thriving, education system and schools with 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 you know ever changing needs and people like you are exactly what our board needs in regards to addressing those issues and making sure that people particularly the policymakers and uh, the people in the schools understand those issues that our parents are feeling so thank you so much Con congrats and good luck uh, wishing you all the best I want to see you shine on the on the board of ed and uh, I've don't forget, I got I got three kids coming to you soon. Yes. So, all right, yes. I got two already at Morley. So they'll, they'll be they'll be hearing from me. All right. Yes, and I and I look forward to hearing from them too. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank all right. You. Uh, we'll be back with more. Awesome. Good job. Thank you, man. Uh, Democratic headquarters in West Hartford on election eve here for the municipal races, and with me today is. The newcomer on the Democratic Party, Barry Walters, uh, a great guy, guy who's been in service for the community for a long period of time. Uh, Barry is right off of the streets, his first election night. So, so Barry, uh, question I have for you, how do you feel? I feel good. Yeah? I feel good. It's been a uh, uh, good three-month uh, journey that I've learned a lot and I hope to be able to give back a lot from That's awesome. it. So. And uh, so Barry, what, is it, what does it mean to you to represent West Hartford on the town council? Oh, good question. Um, it means that I think it's a voice um, and I probably have a unique voice that I think I can bring to the town council and I'm looking forward to that. I think. I, I'm excited to see Barry at the town council, um, and, and I guess the last question I have for you is like, what are you the most excited to work on on the town council? Ooh, um, there's so many things. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited a lot for the investment that's going into town. So that kind of has my uh, my eye. But I'm also very interested in working with people in the different communities in town. I'm a community builder kind of guy, and I like to, to bring people together. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that as well. That's awesome. Uh, we're so excited to see Barry uh, do his thing on the town council. I'm going to let him get back to his family that is here to celebrate with him. And uh, we'll be back shortly with some of the other candidates on, on the council. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Uh, Liam Sweeney, uh, outgoing deputy mayor of West Hartford. I'm here today at Democratic headquarters. Uh, to get the election results for the 2023 uh, general election here in West Hartford. And I am honored uh, to be here with my fellow Foxcroft alumni, uh, both John and I, this is John Bailey, he is the Democratic Town Chairman here at West Hartford. John and I both grew up on Foxcroft, and John uh, has been leading the West Hartford Democratic Party for how many years now? I think we're on maybe uh, three, I think it was 2000, and when we came in just during the beginning of the pandemic, myself and Tiffany McGinnis, my uh, vice chair, uh, came in on, on the leadership ranks with the town committee. Nice. You know, John, John, like me, is a longtime West Harbor resident, loves the town. But John, can you tell us a little bit about uh, how you got into politics, kind of your, your background and, and, and why you're here today? Um, I also, it all started uh, with Scott Slifka, to be uh, quite honest. 
I was his sign guy. And so I would go around town, West Hartford, putting up his signs everywhere. And that was uh, how I got, got introduced to the West Hartford Democratic Town Committee. And I just love the party. My family uh, has some good standing in amongst the Democratic um, folks. So, yeah, this is a dream come true. And I love working with the great candidates that we have. John is a very humble man. His family, the Bailey family, uh, an institutional name in the Democratic Party here in Connecticut. Um, we're excited to see the results that are going to be coming in. Uh, thank you, John, for being with us. Thank you, Liam. Uh, and don't, do you usually have like three words that you say to everyone, right? Yeah. Liam, actually, I want to just take a moment to thank you, Liam, for your service to uh, West Hartford. You, you're a kid that made good, and uh, you really represented all the town um, voters. So go fight win. And uh, thank you all for taking part in democracy. It's very important. Thanks, John. Appreciate that. And we'll, we'll be back with more interviews later. Good evening, folks. Uh, Liam Sweeney here at Democratic headquarters. Uh, and with me tonight are three special people. Uh, one person who is elected today, Shannon Merriman. It is such a pleasure. And it's, I am, I'm personally so excited for you to be on the Board of Ed. Uh, Shannon and I have worked a lot in the education space, and I'm so glad to have your policy mind uh, on the Board of Ed. So, uh, you know, I guess I'm going to ask the question to your daughters. What does it mean to have your, your mom on the Board of Ed? Um, <laughs> Are you excited? Yeah. Ma yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, how about we add? Well, well. We'll ask, we'll ask mom, mom, what, do you, what, do, what does it mean to you to be on the Board of Ed? Uh, I'm just excited, first of all, because of these two ladies. I very much want to be involved in our educational system. Um, as you noted, I've been working in education 23 years, and I want to be able to take the knowledge I have at the national and state level and bring those lessons and opportunities I've learned to the local community and I think I just am excited to be more integrated into what we're doing here in West Hartford. So this is uh, your first time running for office, right? What was the campaign trail like for you and the, and the whole family? It was cool. It was just a new learning experience. I love people. I'm, I'm an, an, an introverted extrovert, but I thrive off of being around other people. And so just listening and talking to people while canvassing. I loved um, just the, the forums, the opportunities to express sort of the, the kind of congeal my thinking around what I see as priorities for our educational system in West Hartford. It was just exciting to have that opportunity. So you've been involved in policy for so long. What made you run for office this time? Uh, I think it was just timing. You know, it was the timing in our country right now around how boards of ed are being sort of the, the, the battleground for our democracy. And I want to make sure that we don't take what we have in West Hartford for granted. Um, it's also just timing with what I'm able to do in my in the balance of things in my life so that I know I can make a full commitment to this uh, opportunity. Amen. We are on the opposite sides of that right now. Yes. Um, but um, <laughs> so yeah, my, 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 my last question to you is um, what are you most excited about uh, working on on the Board of Ed? Um, I think West Hartford has a unique opportunity, given the reputation of its educational system, to think a little bit outside the box of the way that we design and deliver public education, because we can't continue to do things that we, the way we've been doing them at, at, for so many years if we expect our students to be prepared for the future that awaits them. So I want to try out some new innovative practices and policies and see that, make sure that we stay ahead as, as a school system. And what are you most excited about with your mom being on the Board of Ed? I, well, I think that she could do a really good job making our schools better. And I also um, think that we can have no homework. <laughs> I don't know that that's good. Um, but yeah, I think she could do a really good I'm, job. I'm, I'm in for that policy. I think that, that's fair. That's fair. Well, Shannon, congratulations. So awesome. Congratulations to you guys uh, and your husband. Uh, a, a campaign well well ran and really really excited to see you uh, up on the board of ed. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank thank you and uh, thank you for everyone from Democratic headquarters. We have now talked to everybody that's been on the ballot tonight. Um, we are so excited to finally get the results. We are going to see what they are, but right now we believe everyone is going to make it on to the the council and the board of ed from this headquarters, and we're excited to see how it shakes out.
Thank you all for the time. And uh, again, Liam Sweeney here uh, with West Harbor Public Access. Thanks so much. Adley, and we're just here to talk about kind of one of the things, what made you run for Board of Ed today? Yeah, um, well, one of them's standing right here. Yeah. Um, and the other is, um, I'm the son of a lifelong educator. Um, my dad was a principal for his most of his career. Uh, he, he passed away actually um, the same week I got a call about this possibility. And so it just kind of seemed like things are, you know, kind of came together really well. And it was a good way to honor his legacy and, and to give back to our community. So how was the campaign trail being unopposed? I, you know, it was great. It was a good way for me to still get out there, knock on doors, learn the different communities, and really hear from people what they're thinking and you know, what they want from their schools. Yeah. Um, so outside of um, your, your door knocking, what was some of the best uh, like voter contact that you had during the campaign? You know, actually, today was great. Um, there were so many people who came out and stopped when they were coming in to vote just to you know, talk about you know, their concerns or just to give their support. Or, you know, and it was great to be able to thank people for coming out. I mean, you know, municipal elections are notoriously low voter turnout, and I think we did really well today. Absolutely. And so uh, we've been asking this from everyone. What, with, your new term, with a term coming up, what are you most excited about to work on on the Board of Ed? Yeah, you know, first thing for me is going to be getting into each of the schools, meeting with the administration, and really learning for me. I, I mean, I want to hit the ground running. So, you know, listening, going into the schools, listening to the PTOs, and, and really kind of getting a sense of, of where people are at. And, and Hadley, what, what are you most excited about having your dad on the Board of Ed? Um, I'm just really excited for him because um, I just really want him to win, and I'm proud of him. The real question I have for you is how many doors did you have to knock on? Um, I don't really know. Do you make any phone calls? No. All right. He, 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 he was easy on you? Oh, that's good. Well, Jason, we're so excited to, to see you on the, on the Board of Ed, excited about the next term, and congrats to you and the family. Uh, I know you, you guys are excited to have that in the rear view and we're so excited to see what you're going to do on the Board of Ed. It's going to be good. I'm looking forward to getting to work. Awesome. Excellent. Uh, thanks, and we'll be back. Good evening, folks. Liam Sweeney here back at uh, Democratic headquarters. I'm here uh, with my dear friend and colleague, Carol Innocent Blanks, Councilwoman, uh, Chair of uh, the Public Safety Committee, and now on to her second term, on to the third term on the council. That's right. Former chair of the of the Board of Ed, and just so excited to see what is next. So, Carol, how do you feel now that the, the campaign is over, and what are you most excited to do in, in the next term? Yes, I can exhale now that the campaign is over. Door knocking was great. Everything started off very well beginning in July. So I'm very excited. Well, what do I hope to do? So we've done a good job with uh, affordable housing and uh, making that a priority for our council. So I hope to do that in the next council, continue to do that and step it up a bit. Um, there's a huge need for public safety. It's interesting because as I, as I was door knocking, many people asked me what were my priorities. And my priorities really is public safety, our affordable housing, and also addressing our stormwater drainage issue and how we can manage that better, replace the aging infrastructure, so that when we have these weird storms that everybody has experienced this season, we have a plan on how to address this without homeowners going into debt, trying to fix the flooding uh, problem in their basements or in and around their backyards. And I'm looking forward to working with our new team that's coming on board. So I'm hoping everybody is victorious tonight and we can get to work uh, on uh, November 21st. Yeah, that's great. So uh, now th going into your third term, um, what do you think has been the, the best, best part of serving on the town council? The best part of serving for me is listening to the community, working with our professional staff uh, in town hall, and um, really listening and addressing some of the continuous issues in town. So we know that public safety was a huge issue for us uh, beginning of December of last year and continuing forward. And we've done a good job with 
uh, collaborating and bringing other community members into addressing this problem. We're working with Vision Zero. With Vision Zero, we're also working with community members who have expertise and who could really shine a bright light on how we can manage this issue. And also, um, uh, affordable housing is a big issue with our young people who are either coming back from college, graduated from college, our teachers, our first responders who want to live in town because they work here. And we really need to find a way to bring everybody in the fold and work with them, listen to them, and find out how we can make them uh, whole, if you will. Everybody wants to come to West Hartford. The big issue or the barrier is affordable housing. It's too expensive. So now that we know that, what can we do to address that problem? Compromise and meet people where they're at or meet somewhere in the middle. I mean, those are all such important things. And Carol has been such a leader, particularly on the Public Safety Committee. We've had some significant events that have happened, and you helped lead the town through those. And I guess, you know, on a more lighthearted question is like, what does it mean to you to ha have been elected to your third term and, and serve, serve this, this beautiful community? Absolutely. I'm humbled and I'm honored to be elected, to serve an elected seat, to know that the West Hartford community uh, believe in me and put their trust in me and actually elected. And it's a very good feeling. So I'm really speaking to all of you. When you tell me when I'm standing at the polls and um, poll standing and you give me the thumbs up or you give me that nod or that wink, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart and tell you uh, how a humbling experience this is uh, for me. So thank you to all of those who put your trust uh, and have provided me with the support to be able to serve for a third term as long as I'm uh, victorious and successful at the outcome of this election. We know that Carol is going to do so many great things here on the council that she already has. She's an amazing leader, um, and I'm just so excited to see what's next for you. And, um, you know, enjoy the rest of the evening with your family, and then we'll, we'll be right back uh, with, with the other. Yeah, oh, on a sad note, I'm going to miss this guy right here <laughs> and all the work that he's done and all the work that he's done for the young people. So I'm going to try to take that charge on and keep them at the forefront because they are a future of this community. Well, appreciate that. Thank you very much, Madam. I appreciate that a lot. Um, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's got me all choked up here. Uh, but yeah, w with that, we'll be right back uh, with some more interviews. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Liam Sweeney here back at the uh, West Harbor Democratic Headquarters. I'm here with Ben Winograd, longtime town councilman. So what is this? What term is this now? Fifth term. Oh, my God. Fifth term. But So, Ben, um, being at your fifth term, you've been a leader on affordable housing. You have moved this council in the right direction. We have seen so much uh, growth in this town. What is the next big thing that you are looking forward to working on? Um, uh, great question, and thank you. Um, I, gotta, I have to start off by Deputy Mayor thanking you for all your service. I, you know, appreciate uh, that. And thank you for your new your new role here. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's been great. Um, listen, I think that we've got to continue the work we've been doing. Um, and the new affordable housing is coming up. It's fantastic. Um, obviously, zoning issues come up, and we'll look at them as they come in. But I think we really have to look at zoning um, and see whether or not you know we're we're maximizing our ability to really move things forward, right? Um, so uh, it, the transit-oriented or in development that we did on New Park is fantastic. We just saw a new project come up today that's getting a, that that came through the pipeline. Um, I think that's something we have to continue. Um, listen, we're a community that people want to live in, and that's fantastic. Uh, but that comes along with it. Because we're doing so well, I think we really have to make sure we have places for people to live. Yeah, that's great. I mean, you've helped us through so many, so many important things along the way. Uh, but now doing five, this being going in your fifth term, what do you think has, what was the, the proudest moment of serving on the council so far? Um, I mean, listen, personally, obviously, the, the, you bring it up all the time, the accessory dwelling units. Which the one that I take personal stake in, just because it was, I, I really did push it forward, and that was, you know, a lot of times you work with a team, and that one is one that you know, kind of my idea that I brought forward. But and that's nice. But most recently, the um, the West Hartford Inn, you know, joint effort there, 
that was just amazing. I mean, the fact that we're going to be bringing 100% affordable housing into our downtown area is just, it's, it's amazing that we're doing it. We got very little opposition. Um, and we're really going to improve a lot of people's lives. And we're going to make the center more vibrant. We're adding people who will work there, shop there, will walk there especially, um, and, and also have bus lines into, into Hartford. And again, no, no other town is doing that kind of development. Um, and I'm really proud of what we're doing with that. So with that, it piggybacks right into uh, my next question, which is what are you looking forward to the most in your next term? Boy, you know, fr th that's a hard one. Um, I think um, you know, a lot of developments are sort of in the pipeline, and it's exciting. I want to start seeing some, uh, I'm looking forward to some groundbreakers, right? I want to start seeing some actual buildings open, uh, some things we've approved. I mean, one that's coming up, uh, it'll be this month, actually, is going to be um, hopefully um, breaking ground on fellowship housing. Um, I'm on the board there. We've got a whole bunch of senior housing coming on. Um, it's been an approval process that's been difficult. Um, but with the help of the town council um, and uh, all the efforts of the fellowship and state government, federal government, we're very close to being able to open there. And that's going to be a fun event. And that's just going to, again, it should be within the month. And that's really going to add a whole bunch of uh, new development for town. That's, that's amazing. You can see Ben has constantly had a focus on helping the community uh, and, and taking care of some of, some of the residents down that don't necessarily have it as good as everyone else. And that's why he's, he's been elected five times now. Uh, and I'm so looking forward to seeing what is next uh, in the next term. And appreciate you coming out tonight. And, right. and congrats. Appreciate it. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you so much. All right. The ballot came in strong, and that was Lisa's hard work there working with our clerk. So thank you both so much. It's been a pleasure working with you all. All right, I just want to say, we're going to throw it over to some folks, but I just want to say the council and the Board of Ed members, the candidates, thank you for being such hard workers during the last, uh, again, five months. It's been a really... Uh, tough slog, but we hit the doors, we made the calls, and you guys gave us the opportunity to uh, support you and um, have us be victorious. So thank you, Board of Ed and Council Members. And also, um, just want to say thank you to um, Leon, our new clerk. Um, really happy for Leon. Um, to be honest, I, I, I've seen Leon and he just smiles more. It's amazing. I mean, he just walks around like on cloud nine. Um, and uh, on that note, I just want to also want to say it's been a tough slog, as I said. And uh, we started um, this journey in July, and it was a pretty tough uh, convention, but we came through that str uh, stronger. And then we had some really difficult times during our campaign, but we just persevered and kept on fighting, and kept on pushing. But I do actually want us to all just take a moment of silence for um, Earl Exum. Um, he was an amazing man, and, and I know John Lyons misses him, and we all do. Just so a moment of silence. All right, folks, well, um, before we start um, hearing it from folks, um, particularly Shannon with the Board of Ed and the Mayor and the Council, I just want to thank you again all for your hard work. Um, this victory, this is the hard work that we put in. And um, so thank you, and I'm grateful for our team. And uh, Shannon, I want to say a few words for the Board of Ed. Um, I'm going to try to protect as long as possible. I thought you were talking about kids. No, 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 they don't even see us. Yeah, um, so on behalf of uh, Jason, Latoya, and myself, just want to extend a huge uh, thank you to everybody. This, we are all first time candidates and this has been a learning curve and journey for all of us. We've learned from each and every one of you. 
Um, and a special huge thank you to Maureen and John for being guides every step of the way. Um, you, you can't even count the number of text messages that we had back and forth with each other. Um, just trying to navigate and learn along the way and get better at what we were doing um, as candidates and, and learn again from, from those who come before. Um, thank you to Adam, who is our treasurer, Victoria's husband, and um, had, the learn, had his own learning curve. I mean, everybody has just been in a learning mode every step of the way, but it was worth it because we came to this conclusion. Um, and I think we're all just super excited to be on the board of ed and start actually getting to the work of not only continuing the amazing um, you know, reputation of our school system, but taking it to a whole new level in terms of what we can be for the future of our children and our families and what's our career. So thank you. Um, so grateful for the town council members as well. And we can't wait to work with you every step of the way. So um, thank you for being here and we look forward to it. Thank you everybody for your support um, and all the great hard work 
Listen, um, you go out and you meet with people and we hear the negative, right? And that's what you know, a lot of campaigning is going out and hearing people who are complaining about stuff. And then you look at the results and you see what kind of job we've been doing. Um, and we, I mean, everybody in this room. Um, the people at Charter like the direction we're going in. Uh, West Harvard is a place where everybody wants to live, and we're doing our best to really make it a place where everybody can live. Um, and I'm just so proud of our town, our leadership, um, of the mayor's direction. Um, we're really, we are an example for every other town like ours. Not that anybody's like us, or as good as us, but we're the example for the, for the whole state. And we're to show that progressive democratic leadership wins, and progressive democratic leadership does the best for our community. Uh, so thank you all. Uh, thank you to my family. Uh, and thank you to my, everybody else for bringing that ticket. Uh, board of Ed and Council. We have a great team. And I look so much forward to working with everybody in the next couple of years. Thank you all.
my treasurer. Thank you. I don't know where Lexi is. Thank you so much. Adam, I mean, come on, man. You have to Seriously. Seriously. You need to be making a lot of money for your design work. Um, Kevin, who is the sign fairy, as you know, and even though he hasn't felt well, would call me and say, put out 25 signs. I'm going to flip them out today. Uh, Kay, the Kaylee Townsend, who isn't here tonight, Harriet Winograd, John and Diane Tucker, Lee and Kevin Reynolds for hosting my fundraiser, oh, no. um, the DTC, John Bailey, Megan, Lisa, Derek, Liam, who somehow talked me into this in the first place. Um, I'm happy to get to work. I'm happy to be a part of this team. And I'm really damn happy that this is the first freaking female Democratic majority. And just so you know, I wrote that down before I came and then wrote Jinx, knock on wood in parentheses because I was afraid I jinxed myself by doing it. So thank you everybody. I owe all of you a huge debt of gratitude and I promise that I will always keep what's in the best interest of West Hartford in my heart and do whatever I can to make this town to keep it going great and make it even better. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The third term, I am so humbled and honored to be able to be elected for a third term from this beautiful town of West Hartford. So my thanks, first and foremost, goes to my family, my husband, Charles, my daughter, are unable to be here with us, that's Shannon, Cynthia, and Kay. Uh, my brother and sister-in-law, uh, my campaign committee and treasurer, which is Gary Martell, my campaign manager, Victoria Rosario, my campaign committee, which is Rosemary Tate, Lisa Lazarus, um, Gail Crockett, uh, Felicia Pitts, uh, Lori uh, Wise, and uh, Keyshawn Lewinson, and I'm forgetting one other person. Annette Martell. Um, DTC members, the machine, you always, always, always come through. Um, my fundraising host uh, families, that is Diana and George Jepson. Um, pick up the phone, ask people, would you host a fundraiser? They say yes. Uh, John Lyons and Jessica Lyons. What can I do, Carol? Let me know. Whatever I can help you do, I'll help you. Writing the postcard. Uh, Barbara Gordon, another one. I mentioned all of these people because none of this is possible without volunteers. You've given up your time, you've given up your donations for all of those who donated. Every single amount counts. So no one ever has to say, I only can do this and I only can do that. Because at the end of the campaign, every single contribution, it matters. It allows us to get out in front, it allows us to run our campaign, it allows us to run our campaign smoothly. Joe Stafford, he's another one that's always in my corner. Carol, you're doing a great job, I support you. So many of you have said this to me along the campaign trail, and it means a lot because when you're out there, you're doing the hard work, you're door knocking. Uh, this, this season, we had some challenging weather, so we couldn't really get out like we wanted to. It's either rain or it's cold, and you really do want to go, but then you're like, who's going to open up the door when you're drenched raining or you have an umbrella? So I say this because it's really important for all the work that each and every one of you do. Uh, sign waving early in the morning, it really matters. So when we call or we text and we say, hey, can you do this? Maybe you can't do it, but when you show up, it's huge and it's a lot, it means a lot uh, for us. 
Um, many, of, many of the people along my campaign trail when door knocking are always concerned. They say, we're doing great with the town, but some of the other issues they're concerned about. So what are your, what are your issues? What is your platform? And mine is public safety, affordable housing, and how do we address our aging infrastructure, our um, 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 stormwater management and drainage, right? We can't continue to kick the can down the road. We have to be responsible because eventually it hits all of our properties. Neighbors on the street that are spending $40,000 because their basement is flooded because of the drainage of water that's coming down into the How many people like that do you know in your neighborhood, on your street, who says the same thing? And what can we do? I am proud to be part of the council who is responsive and who is responsible. And I welcome our new team. I'm so excited and happy to work with Tiffany and Deb. They were appointed, so we already know that working style. But Barry, I'm so thrilled that you're joining us. Can we give it up for Barry? <laughs> I do want to thank the Board of Ed. Yay. I came from the Board of Ed. I really have to nod for these two great people and excited to see all the work that they're going to do and how we collaborate together. So last but not least, I really want to sing the DTC praises, the chair, um, um, Mr. John Bailey, and Tiffany McGinnis as our vice chair. I will be doing both. Thank you for all the hard work that you all do, continuing to get that vote out and to say, hey, we need to come together as a team. It's important. And teamwork really does make the dream work. It may sound like an old saying or a corny saying, but it really is true. And the other person that I do want to shout out to is Senator Slack. Because Senator Slack always reaches out and says, hey, able to do that and we knock those doors out. And the other person is my friend, Leon Davidoff, who stepped off, but he didn't step away too far. And he's always there to provide support and guidance. And the other person that I want to acknowledge, because she doesn't get acknowledged too often, but she's always right here, is our media person. An extraordinary. So one of the things about going last is everybody has pretty much said a lot of what you wanted to say, but I do have a lot of thank yous, um, but I will try to keep it brief. Um, I am so proud to have my son here tonight. Um, I don't know where Devin is hiding right now. You probably heard his name and hit. But, and then my husband, David, who couldn't be here tonight. Um, but I, I, they put up with a lot for me, and I, I have to appreciate that. I have no choice. Um, but yeah, I appreciate that this, uh, very much. Um, I need to thank... Matt Solner, of all people, where to go, who brought me into the DTC. I, I, he, I still remember sitting with him at the elbow room, I think it was, and over a conversation, and, um, and here I am today. Um, I want to thank my campaign staff, Alicia. So what does a new campaign, what does a new candidate do that has a run? He went out and found two new people that haven't managed or been a treasurer. And they did an amazing, fantastic job. Alicia Wise and Jackie Cantor. Manager and treasurer, they did an awesome job. And I thank you so much. Um, and great for, who's not here, but for doing a lot of his legalese and his, uh, his uh, uh, editing skills. Uh, 
There's a few other people, Tiffany. Um, I thank you for your friendship and for kind of being a sounding board when I needed one. Um, ben, Mr. Winograd, who brought me in as a, I think I was first a social media manager, and then I did a manager uh, a stint with him, and I thank you for giving me that opportunity and learning a little bit more about what's going on. And then you quit on me. And then I quit on him. <laughs> <laughs> and he's still using the same social media. Uh, so, and then obviously the council, um, Sherry, you have been such a great ally and great on out there. I love you Carol, you've been checking on me all throughout, making sure that I'm doing okay, um, that I'm not too tired, <laughs> I'm not too worn out. Um, I appreciate you. Uh, and who am I? Deb, there you are. <laughs> um, and Deb, who also has been a, a good sounding board and a, a friend as well. Um, I'm really thrilled with our BOE team. I think this is going to be an awesome team. And combined with Lorna and Claire and, and Ari, I mean, it's a great, awesome team. I, I, gonna blow them away. Um, I think I'll, I'll close it down with this. Today while I was poll standing, I heard a candidate not from our party say, a town cannot be all things to all people. And he's absolutely freaking wrong. A town should be all things to all people. Everybody should have a place. Everybody should have an opportunity. Everybody should be able to live their life without fear and, and with, with comfort and, and with a sense of belonging. You know, we talk about equality and we talk about equity. There's also a sense of belonging and there's a difference. And we absolutely should aspire to be a town for everybody. And I think that we have a team that is working towards that goal. It's a moving goal. So if we're, you know, will we ever get there? Probably not. But we should always aspire to get there. Thank you.
back and changed their classrooms into spaces where all students felt safe. And, I, and I'm reminded of that moment that we're in right now and about the need to feel safe and secure. And I'm excited about being in West Hartford. I'm excited to serve in West Hartford. I'm also excited about more black candidates, more black progressive candidates coming to this town and running. I'm excited about being an activist who was on the ground making a lot of influence and had a hand in a lot of influential policy reform and to be asked over and over again to come to the table. I'm excited about activists who've been asked to come to the table and we're here. We are here. We're here right now. And what we need from our Democratic Party is to accept us with open, loving arms to welcome us, to let us know we belong in this space. And we're not always going to be obedient, right, to the system. Because we came from doing it a different way. The system doesn't work for everyone. So what I need from our party, what we need from our party, what the youth that are coming up for, by the way, more radical than me, they need to know that they have a spot and there's a pipeline for them in this town to sit at these leadership tables. So let's do it. So it's, it's really not an enviable spot to follow Shannon or Latoya, let alone the entire town council. Uh, I learned a long time ago that discretion is not actually the better part of valor, but brevity is. Um, I, I will thank my, my wife and son who are at home. Uh, my, my son is sick, my wife is taking care of him, but I do have my daughter Hadley here. Uh, thank them for, for letting me do this, for being with me on this uh, uh, this adventure, as I think uh, someone once called it. Um, you know, all I can do is, you know, is thank you. Because I know um, elections are often referred to as races, right? And I know the mayor will understand that she's a runner. Obviously, I am not. I know John's a runner. Um, running is easier when you have friends. And you have all been welcoming to me as, as, as someone new to this entire process. Uh, you have become friends. This race was a lot easier to finish with all of you together. I can't possibly thank all of you who contributed and knocked on doors. Um, but what I can do is get to work. And so that is how I will thank you. So let's get to work. Well, all right. Well, like everything. Yes, Claire. Yes, and I'm proud to do that, and I appreciate that. Um, and Lorna, would you like to say a few words? Thank you. Well, good evening, and congratulations to all of the winners. It certainly has been quite an interesting ride, and we certainly are glad the outcome is as it is. And I'm here to speak on behalf of the Board of Education, which I have the honor to serve on, and I'm so thankful to welcome newcomers to the team. So once again, round of applause for our newcomers. <laughs> but before recognizing the newcomers, we must recognize those who the places they are stepping into. So I'm going to say this without getting choked up. I want to say with heartfelt appreciation, thank you so much to Ari Steinberg and Renee
far enough. And I just want to give one a more individual an opportunity to address us, and that's our own Leon Davidoff. <laughs> First, I want to thank everyone for being here. I want to thank all the people I've served with over the long period of time that I was on the town council. I've made a lot of friends. We've had a lot of good times. We've spent a lot of time together. That's what public service is about. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about our community. I need to thank, before I forget, my wife. <laughs> There's a reason we've been married for 30 years, and every day it's a blessing to wake up and spend my life with the uh, best woman that I ever met in my entire existence. And like the saying goes, when you have the best, you don't need the rest. I have two beautiful daughters who are in the West Hartford Public School System. They're doing phenomenal. West Hartford is a great town to live, to raise a family. When I decided that I was interested in town court, I didn't really know what the job entailed. But let me tell you, after speaking to my good friend, Essie Lebro, one of the best town clerks this town has ever had, probably the best town we've ever had. Let me say that again, the best town clerk this town has ever had. I have the most amazing staff. Every single day they make me look good. Nadia, Tiana, Sylvia, Louise, and Carol. They know their job inside and out. They've been welcoming, they've been educating me every day. I learn something new. I love being our town's town clerk. I absolutely love it. It's not a job, it's a thing that I just enjoy doing every single day. I show up every day, I roll up my sleeves. It's fun. It's really fun. I need to thank everybody on the DCC over the years who've welcomed me in, shared experiences with me. You've been wonderful. You've been marvelous. I've learned so much. I love the game of politics. It, 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 it's, it's so much excitement. And there's a lot of stuff on the side that when you look at it at the end of the day, you say, listen, the most important people live within the four walls of my house. Probably the most important people live in the walls of your own houses. And just keep it in perspective because that's what it's about. We've got a great community. I've had the honor to serve with two great mayors. Scott Slifka was a great mayor. I served with him from zoning all the way to the council. And I had the honor and the privilege, in my opinion, to serve with the best mayor that West Hartford has ever had. Sarah doesn't need a lot of accolade for me, but let me tell you something. From the time she wakes up in the morning to the time she goes to sleep at night, she bleeds West Hartford. She thinks about West Hartford. She has put West Hartford on the map. She understands West Hartford. She's a great mentor. She's a great lady. She's very kind. She's generous. She's a great listener. And we all can learn a lot from being like Sherry Cantor. I don't know if Liam is still here. I don't know if he left. But Liam and I, we had a lot of fun, sir. And I'll never forget the day your mom was taking pictures at the Noel Webster Library of us on our first mailer there, and your first mailer. And you know what? I said, Liam Sweeney grew up in West Hartford, loves West Hartford, and has done everything that he could possibly do for West Hartford. And you came along at the same time as Dallas, and let me tell you, I've learned so much from your generation that had changed my perspective of how I see our community. And that's what I think we all can do. We can learn from people who are older than us, and, and in that respect, I've learned from the best of the best, Kevin Sullivan. While he may not be 
He's the easiest person to get along with. He's the smartest politically per political person I've ever met. He's a kind person, and you get to know him. And um, he's a good friend of mine. So there's a lot happening. I see Judy here, I see Tiffany here, Ben, Carol, Barry, Adrian. I've seen a lot of people that work with John. We have the whole thing. There's a reason West Hartford Democrats win year after year. And there's a reason the other party doesn't come close. And we should have known after the nominating convention, when you don't go for the majority, they concede that we as Democrats are leading much better than they ever could. And to my council colleagues who haven't heard me speak since my last meeting, <laughs> I apologize for going on so long, but I'm very, I'm very happy, I'm delighted, and I was teasing with my family on the way over. I called both my girls, I said zero precincts have reported, but all the news outlets are projecting Leon Davidoff has won his first term as West Harper Town Club.